Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> so, how about you at home? Were you able to pick up that final tone? Or were you left listening to the sound of silence? Well, either way, you may have noticed a trend. As this chart shows, the higher the frequency, the younger you typically have to be to hear that sound. So why is that the case? And what does it have to do with your brain? To help answer that, here's Yale University's Brian Scholl. Sounds out in the world are just vibrations in the air. But what we hear is determined by patterns of neurons firing in our brains. So the first step in hearing a sound is to somehow translate an air vibration into an electrical neural signal. This is done by microscopic hair cells in our ears. Different hair cells are activated by different frequencies of vibrations in the air. But as we age, these hair cells start to deteriorate so that we gradually lose the ability to hear these frequencies. What? And who knows, your kids could be using a high-frequency ringtone I'll take that. without you even knowing it. So the first point in our battle of the ages goes to the younger brain. But this next game is going to come down to experience, so older brains should have the advantage. Take a look at the numbers on your screen. They're following a strict pattern. Can you figure out the next number in the sequence? Got your answer? It's 34. If you got that right, there's a good chance you're over the age of 34. In fact, you're probably over 44. What makes me say that? According to brain scans, young people tend to use only one side of their brain to complete specific tasks, whereas older adults are more likely to activate both hemispheres. This pattern is known as bilateralization. It allows older brains to make more solid connections and solve problems like this one more efficiently. And for those of you who haven't figured out the pattern, all you do is add the two preceding numbers to get the next number. For using both their left and right hemispheres, that round goes to the older brains. But we're gonna give both teams a chance to drive home the point in this next game. It doesn't matter if your brain is younger or older. Almost everyone thinks they're a great driver. But the question is, who really is better behind the wheel? To help answer that, we've enlisted expert stunt driver Mike Burke. He's helped us design a test to determine whose brain is better when it comes to navigating distractions on the road. Your challenge is to figure out who's behind the wheel, this guy, or this guy. Mark, are you a good driver? Excellent driver. 35 years, impeccable record. How about you, Joe? Not perfect, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter. What do you mean by not perfect? Uh, I got a couple tickets. Uh, didn't pass my driver's test the first time, but uh, I'm all good now. OK, well, what we have here is, of course, with some surprises. You guys ready? Yeah, ready. Let's go. As our volunteers take turns navigating this course one at a time, a series of distractions will pop up, vying for their attention. The object is to complete the course without bumping into any obstacle. Oops. Looks like our first driver is ready to go. Remember, your job is to figure out who's behind the wheel. Slalom through the barrels? Check. Great maneuver. Don't get hit. Wow, this guy's really on the ball. Don't hit grandma. Woo, that was close. Good job. Runaway baby. Incoming. Oh, he swerved off course and hit the cones. Good job. Only one mistake. Any guesses as to which guy was behind the wheel? Now watch driver number two. Think he can do even better? you're supposed to avoid the obstacles. Good job. That's more like it. Oh, but he couldn't avoid the ball. Nice reflexes. Look out. Can he stay on course? 